A tribute to Tim Burton, champion of the outsiders. I am not a dark person, and I don't consider myself dark, once said Tim Burton. Unluckily for him, this is not the legacy he leaves behind, and a far cry from the work that the general public associates him with. You might be able to tell I was a big monster fan. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I grew up watching like all the old Universal horror movies. and uh... Known for films such as The Nightmare Before Christmas, Sleepy Hollow, Big Fish, and more, Burton has established himself as a director privy to whimsical, fantastical worlds with a macabre edge. Humble Beginnings In 1980, Tim Burton began working at Walt Disney Studios as an apprentice animator after graduating from the esteemed Cal Arts. Ultimately, he left due to creative differences and clashing artistic sensibilities, which makes perfect sense if you're familiar with his work. In essence, his work was too dark, too macabre for the family-friendly brand. It was a bit more, you know... <laughs> Disney friendly. It's like, here, let Goofy and Minnie <laughs> show you. In the book Tim Burton Cahiers du Cinema, it even mentions how Burton was often found hiding in closets or working under his desk at Disney. He was antisocial and hard to connect with, even at the young age of 22. Surprisingly, Burton would eventually return back to Disney to direct films such as Alice in Wonderland and Dumbo. These dark sensibilities were born from a young age, where Burton was influenced by the horror film genre and drawn to darker, more isolated places. According to History Daily, he found solace in the cemetery at the end of his street, Valhalla Memorial Park Cemetery, not being fond of his life in this neighborhood. Even from the beginning, Burton has always been one of a kind. You no, know, you can't do this, or you have to do it that way, or this way, or whatever, and so it's really nice to retain sort of an interior, interior world. where you Creating a world of his own. Often set in what most would consider as bleak environments, Burton's films often deal with the crossroads between the living and the dead. Sometimes this is more obvious as in films like The Corpse Bride or Frankenweenie, which quite literally parlay between those two worlds. Other times it is more subtle, as in the thematic sense of what is lively and what is instead decayed or too far gone, what is accepted and unaccepted, what is known and unknown. In a more digestible sense, his films explore ideas that the living are unfamiliar with, even fear making for a very spooky and haunting tone for much of his work. Oh, I've got it! I've got a Dwarf! And I'm not afraid to use him! Sometimes it can be seen as unpalatable for the general audience. According to Burton and his critics, this dark world takes inspiration from the German Expressionism movement, Edgar Allan Poe, and the Gothic era. With harsh shadows creating an unnerving quality to the world of the living, Burton creates an aesthetic tinged with uncertainty. Death is on the fringes. His incorporations of Victorian or Gothic elements result in a classic feel to his films, causing audiences to feel as if they've gone backwards to a more primitive time. Ooh, this is some huge house, isn't it? Thank goodness for those aerobics. Classes. This is also supported by the fact that most, if not all, of Burton's films take place in the past, and rarely modern day. However, sometimes this bleakness is traded in favor of a fantastical world like in films Big Fish or Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. In these works, Burton employs magical realism to create otherworldly environments and characters. They still have that dark Burton edge, but they are less bleak and more awe-inspiring. Burtonian Tenets The outsider character is crucial to each and every one of Burton's films. Have you caught him yet? Who? Him, that, that cripple. And while having a protagonist leave their ordinary world to embark on an adventure is something present in all films, his stories certainly take it to the next level. Instead of simply venturing out into the world of the unknown, Bertonian characters are inherently different from everyone else in this world, sometimes even ostracized. Take Edward Scissorhands, for example, where Edward is quite literally inhuman and unable to understand social cues or customs. What happened to your face? Even though the community lauds his snipping skills, fascinated by his inhumanness, they will never truly accept him. In The Nightmare Before Christmas, Jack Skellington is set up at odds with his world straight from the beginning. Sure, he's a pumpkin king, king of Halloween, but he's yearning for something new, a desire that no one else understands. Specifically, the dark-haired, gaunt male protagonist usually takes up this archetypal role. 
It's just a few simple vows. With this hand, I will take your wife. <laughs> no. With a thin, malnourished look, coupled with a pale complexion, this character can be seen in films such as Edward Scissorhands, Sleepy Hollow, Corpse Bride, Dark Shadows, and Sweeney Todd, the Demon Barber of Fleet Street. The emancipated look is so emblematic of Burton that a TikTok trend took off in which users made themselves look like Tim Burton characters, darkening their eye circles and emphasizing their cheekbones. Burton's continuous collaboration with actor Johnny Depp in these titular roles also goes to cement his Burtonian brand. The two have done eight films together to date. I have withheld my tender affections, fearful that they were unrequited. And in nearly all of them, Depp adorns these familiar characteristics. Iconic filmography. If you're looking to get immersed in Tim Burton's films, here are some suggestions for the most iconic, career-defining ones you can start with. To characterize his early career, check out Beetlejuice, a story about an undead couple hiring an irritating spirit to drive out a new family that is living in their home. The film stars Michael Keaton, Alec Baldwin, and Winona Ryder, and does a great job of illustrating Burton's unique, unmatched voice. I'll scare him real bad. The point is, folks, I'm gonna do anything to get your business. Hell, I'll possess myself if I gotta, whoa! For a sense of his mid-career greats, check out Edward Scissorhands, Sweeney Todd the Demon Barber of Fleet Street, and Sleepy Hollow, three more gothic films. In this era, Burton's tight collaboration with Johnny Depp was cemented, as well as a solidification of Burton's macabre sensibilities. And if you're looking to see some of Burton's more fantastical films, check out Big Fish or Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, which are more whimsical and sentimental. Lastly, for more of Burton's recent films, you can check out Dark Shadows and Big Eyes. They aren't too similar. Dark Shadows is more of a fun, absurdist ride, while Big Eyes is a rooted relationship drama. Both are great examples of Burton's incredible filmmaking. And I couldn't hear, so I found myself staring. I relied on the people's eyes. You can get excited about Burton's return to his classic aesthetic as it was announced he's working on an Adams Family live-action television show for Netflix. The source material seems perfect for his style, and we can't wait to see what he cooks up.